this week after it's approved by the House. We talked to the White House press secretary about how soon Americans could get that money and more. The relief bill extends the existing $300 weekly unemployment benefit through September 6th and offers a tax break. People won't have to pay taxes on the first uh, just over $10,000 of, uh, of their unemployment insurance benefits. And the bill's $1,400 stimulus checks will be the largest yet for most Americans. How soon do you expect that this third round of stimulus checks will be sent out? Our plan and our hope is that uh, these direct relief, much of the direct relief will be out the door before the end of the month. So everybody, good news for retirees and the senior citizens. Big changes are coming to Social Security and Medicare. Congress has actually confirmed that many people can expect to receive some extra money and towards these uh towards the end of the year and towards the holiday season you'll be getting some most money left and right. For instance, Joe Manchin is now re meeting with uh, Republican lawmakers to try to reach an agreement on this. High inflation has rocked the U.S. economy this year. It drove a large part by events that happened during the crisis. Now, low interest rates, stimulus checks, supply chain disruptions, and many more political conflicts have all conspired to send prices soaring. But one thing is for certain, according to Goldman Sachs, while many Americans have been adversely affected by this, high inflation has been challenging for retired workers, most of whom live on less than half of their pre-retirement income. Fortunately, huge, I'm talking about some huge change that are going to Medicare, Medicare and Social Security. So here's the important news that I want you to know. Each year, a cost of living adjustment is applied to Social Security benefits to offset the impact, everybody, of the rising prices. And since inflation is lingering near a four-decade high, beneficiaries will receive an unusually large 8.7% COLA next year. It ranks as the largest increase in benefits in more than four decades. According to the SSA, the average monthly benefit paid to you next year will be $2,000. That's 200 bucks more a month. This extra cash can provide you with some additional financial security, especially as inflation is just getting out of hand. Now, the standard Medicare Part B premium also soared 14.5% to $170 more per month. Then Medicare annual Part B deductible climbed 14.8% again to $233. So who knows, everybody, you could be getting your stimulus money very, very fast. But we hope that President Biden could do something about this because these price hikes outpace the 5.9% COLA this year, meaning benefits have lost their buying power due to the rising cost of Medicare. Fortunately, the standard BRP Part B premium will drop 3% to the $164 a month in 2023, and the deductible will fall again to 3% to $226 per year. It means that most retired workers will save about $70 on Medicare next year. Although that isn't a lot, it's still something. And But the combination of a historic COLA and lower premiums have been a one-time life event. And the Internal Revenue Service, the IRS, issued inflation relief checks for next year. And they apply to pretty much everybody who filed taxes. For instance, the standard deduction will increase by about 7% next year, and individuals will be allowed to deduct $13,000, which is up from nine hundred. dollars Married couples can also file jointly and deduct $27,000. Now, a handful of Republican lawmakers appear to be talking with Manchin on his push to permit reform despite tensions between him and other Manchin senators. Manchin had been pushing for policies that speed up the approval process for energy projects in order to build up more energy infrastructure. His last attempt ran into opposition from both Republicans, who said it didn't go far, and progressives who said it could harm communities. In recent weeks, Manchin has been engaged with talks with Republicans in hopes of finding a lame duck session. Republicans have told the Hill that they're getting permitting reform done, and it's really important. He said it's a slow but steady progress being made, and that he hoped to close what he described as loopholes on time limits in the energy project approval process that he said were part of his proposal. Another Republican has expressed support for Manchin's proposal, given its inclusion of uh, helping the national gas pipeline running through her home state, similarly noted that the, po the important politics that Republicans are playing. Republicans in both chambers have actually focused their whole week on the party's midterms, and now the negotiating surrounding, uh, surrounding permitting reform are especially complex, since the bill will need both Republicans and Democrats on board. While a contingent of both, mostly progressive lawmakers and even others, oppose the push, a rightward shift could alienate an even larger group of necessary voters. It's not cool, but stimulus payments are definitely necessary. Everybody get in here.
Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, we just had a rather lengthy, as you could tell, discussion about the way forward for Senate Republicans, and you have before you the leadership team for the next uh, two years. Uh, we collectively, I think, had a good discussion about what happened in the election and what happens in the next election. And I think everybody in our conference agrees we want to give it our best shot uh, to finish the job in Georgia and concentrate on that uh, for the next month. So I'm grateful for the opportunity uh, to continue to serve and to have this outstanding team behind me, and I'd like to call on a new round of stimulus could be on the way for many Americans, everybody. Now, this new bill could guarantee low-income households with monthly stimulus payments. As long as they qualify, eligible people could receive up to $1,200 in extra relief. Now, this is awesome news. And according to the Washington Post, Democratic and Republican lawmakers have held early discussions about a new round of crisis relief stimulus spending. A bill for a guaranteed income program proposed by progressive Democrats in Congress is calling for ongoing $1,200 monthly stimulus checks for adults, plus $600 for each child in the household. The program, called the Support Act, which was introduced in the U.S. by Minnesota Democratic Representatives Elon Omar and co-sponsored by Representatives Pamela G. Paul and Cori Bush. Omar sent a news release about this bill. For too long, we have prioritized endless growth while millions of people are homeless, hungry, or without health care. The crisis has laid bare these inequalities, and we have the ability to make sure everyone has their needs met. The legislation would set up a $2.5 billion grant fund that would pay for the pilot program. It would pay $1,200 monthly for adults and $600 monthly for each child in the home. Different communities would be involved in the pilot program for the first five years, and then the program would become available to everybody who qualifies. According to the proposed legislation, single filing adults with AGI's income of up to seventy-five dollars and jointly filing adults with incomes of up to $150,000, and those filing a set of household with an income of up to $112,000 will be eligible for the maximum month monthly. Now, a family of four or two children being younger than age 18 and a yearly income under $150,000 would be eligible for $3,600 a month. Now, the U.S. and the U.S. job market remained tight last month as employers struggled to find people to hire. The Labor Department said that the United States businesses added 390,000 jobs in May as the unemployment rate held steady at 3.6%. Job gains for March and April were revised, down by a total of 22,000 jobs. The demand for labor has also left employers hoping that older workers who left the workforce early in the crisis will come out of retirement, especially after the recent drop in the stock market put a dent in the 401ks. The number of workers ages 55 and older grew last month by 181,000. The labor force also grew by 330,000 workers last month, not keeping up the pace with hiring. In order to attract scarce workers, employers have been offering more flexible schedules.